Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Covington City Council study session. In compliance with state law, city council special and regular meetings. Our rate meetings are being held in a hybrid format with in-person, telephonic, and virtual options for public viewing and participation. With that, we'll call this meeting to order, and we'll just go around the room and introduce ourselves. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Start with Joe. Joe Simomo, Council. Beth Porter, Council. Christina Zoltis, Council. Jennifer Harja, Housing Council. John Smith, Council. Jeff Wagner, Mayor. Debbie Hartsock, Council. Adam Easterbrook, Police Chief. Siobhan Johnson, Finance. Uh, Casey Parker, Finance Director. Regan Bully, City Manager. Krista Bates, City Clerk. Thank you, everybody. With that, we have one item for discussion, and that's business and occupation tax. And am I turning that over to Regan or Casey? Casey. Casey, it's all yours. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to make an introduction because you guys have never met Siobhan before. Siobhan is our uh, senior accountant, and she's been with us for going on three years now. So Great. Welcome. <laughs> She's thrilled to be here. I can imagine. Oh, yeah. So here you, you have to work. I know we're Shelly and yeah. Stacy and Casey, but I'm in the corner. Yeah, yeah. kind of in between Shelly and Casey's office. In the, the cubicle hall. right outside. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have a PowerPoint for you. So let me get this up here. Um, let's see. All right, so business and occupational tax. Everybody is super excited. Oh, yep. thumbs up. Woo -hoo. Anything that deals with accounting, I'm excited. <laughs> and, and I get excited because people don't like to talk numbers very often. And so I get pretty excited when I do get some numbers. Okay, so what is a business and occupation tax? So a B&O tax, for those who don't know or aren't familiar, is a tax on gross receipts. It's measured on the gross income of business activities. Um, the revenues that come in from the B&O tax are unrestricted and can be used for any lawful governmental purpose. All business activity is reported under certain tax classifications, and each tax classification has its own rate. And I'll, on the next slide, I'll get to the rates and show you what those look like. Collection and enforcement are the responsibility of tax, taxing districts, so that would be 100% on us and the finance department in particular. And then also we're required to adopt the state's model administrative and B&O tax ordinance. Makes it somewhat easier for you guys because about 95% of that 44 pages worth of code, mm. you can't touch. You just, it, it, the state requires us to adopt it. <laughs> so what um, the rates that I was talking about, businesses that are subject to B&O tax, these are the categories that are in state law. There's manufacturing, retail, services, and other activities, and wholesaling. So those are the four categories. And those are the rates that council can also determine. And those are the ones also that we could have a different rate for each one, or we could make them standard across the board. And then the criteria for being subject to B&O is it's business that's conducted in Covington. So anybody that operates in Covington, anybody that does business in Covington, everybody that does would be subject to the B&O. And the part of the state ordinance is that annual gross receipts threshold is greater than $20,000. So if you only make $19,000 per state law, you wouldn't be subject to B&O. Anything over $20,000, you wouldn't be subject to B&O if that was our threshold. And that's revenue or income? That is income. Oh. But we gross, set that gross, threshold yeah. gross, gross, receipts. gross receipts. Gross receipts. There are some deductions available, um, and I'll get to that also. Um, and can we, can we, could we raise that? Yep. So some, yep. More if we wanted? yep. Okay. That's, that's the, uh, I'll get to it when we get further in, but that's one of the things that the council can control. Mm -hmm. It's the rates, the threshold, and then also any additional exemptions that you'd like to do. And then again, that's kind of what it says here down at the bottom. Well, these are the state requirements. Jurisdictions can do more than the state requires. So again, we can adjust that threshold. We can adjust those rates. And we're also proposing a higher threshold and some additional exemptions. 
So what businesses are exempt from B&O tax? Again, these are in the state law. So this is part of the model ordinance. Public utilities, so you're thinking Covington Water, uh, Seuss Creek Sewer, those are subject to utility taxes, so they wouldn't be subject to B&O. Um, some of these are, are odd, and I don't know exactly why <laughs> that they are not subject, but that is this is in state law. Investments, insurance businesses, employees, and when you, when you see employees, it's just um, determining that you're not an independent contractor, you're an employee, your employee wouldn't be subject to, to B&O. Some certain amounts derive from the sale of real estate, uh, mortgage brokers, third-party providers, service trust accounts, anything that's derived from manufacturing, selling, or distributing motor vehicle fuels. So we already have um, a fuel tax. So then we wouldn't also tax them on B&O. Same for the liquor. We have the liquor excise tax and the liquor profits. And then casual and isolated sales. Think your one-off sales, your garage sales, things like that. Accommodation sales and taxes collected as trust funds. Again, these are what the state requires and we can propose, uh, propose additional exemptions if we choose. So these are just some of the surrounding jurisdictions. Um, I just kind of picked the ones that were closest to us and you can kind of see what their rates are for those four categories and what their thresholds are. Um, looks like Kent is about, <clears throat> is the point one and point two. They have a $250,000 threshold. Auburn is kind of all over the board with their rates. They have a higher threshold, $500,000 threshold. North Bend is the point two across the board and $20,000 threshold. So they just kind of adopted that model ordinance. Yep. Can I ask a question? I know Maple Valley is not in there. Is that because they don't have a you know, tax? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So there are 281 cities in the state of Washington, I believe. I'm not I'm not on that slide, but uh, 50 uh, cities have a B&O tax mm -hmm. out of those. That's not all. No, <laughs> and I do have a handout. I, I think I had sent it to you guys at the summit, but I have a... Um, Another or the budget workshop, maybe, but I have the handout for you if I can, if I can hand that out to get on it. So Siobhan did this wonderful analysis, which is one of the reasons she's here, just in case we want to play with anything else. But this is the number of businesses that are currently in the city that would be over the twenty thousand dollar threshold, and we just kind of did some <laughs> thresholds to show you kind of how the businesses break out. So the total number of businesses four hundred eighty three, and then you can see in each kind of chunk of um, money where those fall. So that's kind of helpful when we're wanting to look at um, potentially setting a threshold, adjusting it from the 20,000. <clears throat> Any questions on that? So I should, I should have yeah. started with this disclaimer. Yeah. So sales tax information is confidential. Oh, okay. And I can't disclose any of the information. We have to sign confidentiality clauses with Department of Revenue. So I can only show summary information like this. And especially even more so if it's less than three, then I um, it makes it even more strict. <laughs> three businesses. So, okay. yeah. True. Okay. Just, just a question. When we're talking services, we're talking like uh, your plumbers, electricians, and stuff yeah. like that. Or... Yeah. Uh, sure there's something else oil there. changes yeah mm -hmm. jiffy loops you know okay Things like that. Yeah. 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 yeah what about like care restaurants okay. restaurants um would be retail. in retailing okay okay thank you jennifer um all medical all is medical in services would be in services yeah. so so let me tell you i, I was going to get to this later like on dental radiology all of those are in services and we have pr uh, pretty good estimates for those type of businesses because they already pay um they're included in retailing and we can see how much they bring in. The data that we get from the state or that we got from the state when we did our um, big upload or download from them, it gets a little tricky with the hospitals because they report statewide revenue. So if there's a hundred multi-care clinics and they're reporting 30 million, 30 billion probably, honestly, dollars, I can't tell what's Covington. So what's included in the numbers that I'm going to show you is Dr. Stennis, everybody that's located in Covington, I can get those. Um, some of them like ProLiance has multiple facilities. 
those yeah. those would be difficult. But the multi cares, the U dubs, I can't. Um, those would be above and beyond the numbers that are in here. But I'm you said you could see them in our current retail. I can see. Uh, or go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. So they sent us a report where um, it sent out to all businesses, and they basically estimate what they think they're going to bring in for that year. And um, there was some discrepancies between what they thought they were going to bring in and what was actually brought in, um, because the only thing that we have that are actual numbers is the retail numbers. So if there's other things besides the retail sacks, then we don't have that information. We're just going based off of what they estimate their revenue to be for that year. So when you're thinking retail sales, big prescriptions, if there's any, I don't know if there's tasks. Um, prescriptions are not any uh, vices if they're selling splints and things like that those things might be taxable they have a retail portion that they always report to us so those are solid numbers gotcha. it's just the services um, the actual services they provide those ones we can't tell the, the important what's thing to, to keep in mind though is when when she gets to the slide going over the numbers it won't include multi-care hospital or you or, or you don't yeah so, only the retail portion right Right. So th there's going to be some amount above what we show you tonight that we'll collect, but we don't know what that we is. Don't. That's super helpful. That, yeah. that's, that's about as solid as I can get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it about? Uh, I think it's based yeah. on my bills. I will well, say that. Yeah. Oh, but we don't know. Yeah. yeah. We've heard different things from different cities, yeah, we'll and they say pay. realistically, it'll take two years before you actually know what those numbers look like. And because we would be starting mid year, it might even take longer mm -hmm. to have that information because it's getting the information out, getting people to pay, making sure that they're calculating it correctly. So to actually know what the revenue would be, it would probably be a couple of years, yeah. The advice that we've gotten, sorry, no, okay. the, no. the advice that we've gotten mm -hmm. from the cities that we've talked to that have just implemented the Auburns and the Tech Willis is adopt the model ordinance and let it lie for a couple of years because you don't know what you don't know. Like you, we need to let it kind of shake out and see what type of businesses we have reporting mm -hmm. and what type, if we have any difficulty collecting um, Auburn's already hired two additional auditors. I think they have five positions. Yeah. Well. But they have, they have a lot of business. They have, we have 483. They have like 6,500. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and they have other categories that we don't. They're doing square foot tax because they have a lot of warehouses. And so they have a lot of more um, to it than, With than we do. Intensive. Yeah. <laughs> there. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. No. So we're confident that the numbers reported to city, like city multi care, not saying they do anything on hand, but like, is any who's validating that the numbers that they give are accurate so that maybe another city might be getting some apportionment or vice versa? Um, so there is a what they call an apportionment, apportionment, and they're supposed to be divvying that out appropriately between the cities that they're within. That's where the auditors come in in some of these bigger cities um, that have those kind of staff. They are digging into those financials and um, and auditing to make sure that they're reporting appropriately. And they can share that. We can, isn't there something where us jurisdictions can share that information between each other to yeah. a certain extent, right? So yeah. if they notice something or we notice something, we can... We have tax sharing agreements yeah. um, that we mm -hmm. um, just implemented last year. It's only a handful of cities. There's maybe a dozen or so on there. I can't remember, but, but we're in there with them with the bigger cities so they can share with we can share with Auburn, Tech Willis, Seattle, Bellevue, um, Tacoma. So, um, so that'll be helpful. It was helpful with Auburn so they could actually share their information and Tech Willis. Okay, so this is just a couple of different scenarios where we're looking at the rates by category and what we feel it'll bring in based on those. So the very first option one is just a B&O rate at the 0.001 or 0.1%. And uh, so that's like half of the maximum allowed. Maximum allowed. And we anticipate that would bring in about 563,000. Again, we have a little bit of wiggle room in there because we don't know what those hospitals are gonna bring in. Option two is just, again, 0.15, just a little bit more. 
845,000 and the point two is 1.1. 1. 1. And I know we had started out with our estimate being about 1.5. I still think this is probably pretty conservative and I also believe we'll probably get there as long as our collections, as long as we have good collections mm -hmm. from folks. But this is just more conservative, uh, more conservative number. Um, how we got these numbers was we took what the business estimate, estimated that they were going to pay, and then we took the retail portion of what was actually paid for last year, and we took the actuals and then the ones that were not listed on there because they don't pay retail, we took their estimates. So they could have estimated high, they could have estimated low. Um, so there are a lot of variables that we don't know. We kind of just have to go off of what they um, showed. But there was a lot of um, retail ones that were pretty much on, on the dollar as far as what they thought they were gonna get. So I think that a lot of people are pretty accurate in what they report. Um, except for, I would say, some of those medical ones, because that's kind of, you never know how many patients you're going to see. Debbie? Um, yes. So when I read through this earlier, I, one of my first questions was why we are going, or what the, your proposal is going to be to stay with the same rate. Um, um, whether it's manufacturer or retail where a lot of other cities have that varied. And I don't know what drives that variation, if it's that um, some have a higher profit margin and some are more um, susceptible to having higher wage rates. It could also be the type of, so if um, a city of Auburn has a big wholesaling um, sector, sector okay. uh, they were also looking at certain dollar amounts they were trying to get to. So they were also playing with those rates to get to what they needed. Um, and there's also some special interest mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You know, you look at some of the exemptions that, that folks are doing and it's racetracks and casinos and boxing, boxing. and, you know, so they, they kind um, of tailor it to to what's in their city and, and okay. who their big, um, not vendors, but who their big, you know, businesses are. Also keeping folks happy. And, Mm -hmm. you know, keeping the businesses there too, so. Okay, so um, your, your feeling is going just with a, a flat rate across the board to start? That's kind of what was recommended to us from both Auburn and Tukwila, that it's for a smaller staff, it's easier to administer for one because if it's the same across the board, you don't really care if they misreport, they're just reporting and we're happy. <laughs> you mean as far as their in. class? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, and then they also said that you I mean you can go back and adjust it. You know, anytime you want to. Um, we were bringing in way more than we needed, but we could also adjust it if we wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> so those are just kind of just some different options. <laughs> and just remind me again, if we did go with a lower rate this time, we yep. can still go up to the point oh oh two at yep. any time. Like not additional, but just yep. maxing that. Right. I, I believe that anytime you make a change in a rate, it may um, reopen the referendum process. I know oh, Mark is on, but um, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so if you change anything, Mark's got his hand raised. You may want to. Yeah. So more. thank you very much. So when it's. <clears throat> Whenever there's an initial imposition of a B&O tax or any subsequent increase in the tax rate, it'll likely include a referendum. It needs to include a referendum procedure. So that allows people to petition and potentially get something on the ballot in order to say they don't want the B&O tax to apply. So in, if we started at a lower number and then tried to increase it, the city would it would be subject to referendum every single time. If we started at a flat number and decreased it, then it wouldn't be subject to any kind of referendum because we're not increasing the tax burden. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Okay, so then um, we kind of did some calculations to show you what happens as we raise the threshold and how many businesses drop off and how much revenue is lost. So when we start out at the 20,000, which is the very the very first one, we have 400, oh, sorry. You have 483 businesses, and that's the 1.1 million, that's at the point two. 
if we increase the threshold to 50,000, so that's businesses over 50,000 would report, we drop down to 379 businesses. So you drop 100 businesses off and we're at 1.1, just you only lose seven seven thousand dollars and that's a hundred returns i don't have to and a lot report. less tax time yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> after this i went through and i added um a hundred thousand and a hundred and twenty five thousand and if we went from 20 to 150 we drop off 261 businesses it's like 54 percent and it's only a loss of thirty three thousand dollars, thirty three seven hundred ninety one. So it's not a huge difference in revenue, but it would help some of the smaller businesses not be subject to this. Yeah, and it pay for itself in staff yeah. time really quickly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why didn't we go up to like two fifty five hundred like some yeah. of the other cities? Mm -hmm. What what does that data look like? Um, I can do that calculation real quick, but I think it was mainly because of the amount that we were trying to get yeah. to. Mm -hmm. um, if we went any further, it was just going to continue to go down, but um, I can I can do that real quick. Our target that we've been talking about since we did our public safety committee has been 1.5. Mm -hmm. And so these are all <clears throat> below that target, but we think it might be a little closer with yeah. the, yeah. yeah. But it's a big difference. I mean, that's a lot of businesses that would not have to yeah. be subject to it. And, and kind of a nicer way to spin it, you know, with the, the small businesses in town. And um, while she's working on that, I'll just, okay. uh, any other questions on the calculation? Nope. Um, so again, like I mentioned, um, what our proposal would be uh, would be to do the 0.2% across the board, across all categories. We estimated it'll generate 1.1 million in additional revenue annually. Um, the impacts to individual businesses would vary by reported gross receipts and also what threshold we chose. I had just picked 75,000. I'd be thrilled with 150. There's, <laughs> there's barely any difference. Um, but I just kind of try to pick something in the middle. Uh, someone that had $100,000 worth of annual gross receipts would see $200, $200 additional taxes that they would submit to the city annually. And then the other thing that I was talking about is um, where we can propose additional exemptions. And I was uh, going to propose city activities. So the city currently pays b &O tax to the state. So we would also be subject to b &O to ourselves. And the kinds of activities that we pay b and on are um, our swim drainage utility fees that we collect, our athletics registration, aquatics registration, um, recreation registration, room rentals, general admission, ticket sales, those type of things. So uh, monthly we pay the state b and so we would be subject to those same, same things if I mean, we could be paying ourselves or we could exempt ourselves. So that would be one proposed exemption. Uh, and it's that's not included in our scenarios, but it's it would be it would be minimal. And then the proposed effective dates would be July 1st. And that would give us still a couple of months to um, roll it out to the businesses, do a lot of noticing. We were thinking of doing like some postcards with a QR code and we'll have a PO tax website set up. So they can see our forms and frequently asked questions and, and things of that nature. Um, so, so really what you have before you is the model ordinance and the model administrative provisions. Like I said, those are required to be adopted by the state. So there's not a lot of not a lot of wiggle room for, for amending those. Um, we can the things that we can really mess around with are the rates, the threshold, and any additional okay. exemptions that we want. And this might be for Mark too, though, or you can make it some fun. If we ended up creating, uh, adding some di different exemptions and then wanting to remove them so that we would expand the types of businesses down the road, is that something also subject to the referendum? Like anytime we want to collect more, regardless of whether it's, so it's receipts, rates, and if we change any exemptions that I think it's just rate, but Mark, are you still there? Yes, I believe it's just rate, but I've, I'll look into that while during this presentation, I'll let you know what I can find out. 
think it's just right. Yes, and so on other um, areas for exemption, what about nonprofits? So um, of, of the 50 cities that are doing a BNO, about uh, 10 of them have additional exemptions. Most of them adopt the model ordinance, but the ones that do have additional exemptions, it's generally the nonprofits that you see. Um, but I would say uh, most of them are, they may exempt the nonprofits except for retail sales. Um, they still make them pay the B&O on retail sales. Um, and there's also additional language that some folks have, like City of Tacoma uh, exempts nonprofits except for hospitals. So um, they do make their hospitals pay, but there's a threshold, anything over 30 million they pay on. So they must, they've got a lot of hospitals up there. <laughs> so Okay, um, thank you. And then um, what about, so if we wanted to look at healthcare in general, so the doctor's offices and um, dental offices, we did hear from a, a dentist that spoke at the open house and he made a very good point. And that is that Medicare has not increased their reimbursement rates for many years. And you know we've seen what that's done to multi-care because we get their quarterly report. Mm -hmm. um, it could this could have an impact on small some of the smaller uh, dental offices and maybe even doctors' offices. It, do you have data that we would be able to look at to say if we were to exempt healthcare practice healthcare segment, what would that strip off from our um, expected? But most of the health care isn't in these numbers you have here now, the, unless they're retail. Yeah, we'll see that. Um, the dentist offices and that, that is included. Oh, it okay. is? Yeah. That's it's just the larger health care. That's included in this. It's, it's the multi-care and, and UW yeah. hospital. It's anybody that it's has multi-chain. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Because we just get the statewide number. It, it, so, so, so MultiCare is a statewide healthcare system, mm -hmm. and they only report their entire earnings yeah. to the mm -hmm. state, not by jurisdiction. Yeah. So we don't have those numbers and won't know them until we actually start collecting. Right, but I guess the dentists in that are included in yep. medical. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So they're in that category. They're in yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, no. Where it's a practice, yeah, you know, dental mm -hmm. practice, medical practice, mm -hmm. yeah. Service. Those are in here, but it would be nice if we knew if we were to exclude them or exempt them, what would what that would be? Yeah, for the services. And is that discriminatory? I guess that's. Or can we yeah. exempt them that like maybe like five hundred thousand have a threshold different for different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, but yeah. no, we can't. Maybe the. How is that different from different businesses who are trying to make a profit? And I mean, with respect, yes, of course, dentals, it's, it's medical, sure, but it is a for profit. Um, why would we want to favor that? Mark. Um, just briefly, when we're talking about the exemptions, while well, council has the authority to exempt, a variety of certain businesses, it must be uniform across an individual class. So whatever the class is, you can't have some businesses at a threshold okay. of 500,000 and some at a lower threshold. And likewise, it, the rate of tax must be the same for the inside, entire single business class, like Casey was pointing out with the retail manufacturing and otherwise. But we we can't set it at different, different rates uh, constitutionally due to uh, for different businesses within the same individual class. To answer Christina's question, the point that that gentleman made, that doctor made, is that for retail or other businesses, they can raise their prices mm -hmm. to their customers, but that but they're locked in, yeah. right? So they can't. So it's coming directly out of their. But they get shop doctors and I, I think only to their Medicaid patients. Correct. I'm going to say, I everyone else, else, my rates everyone are else they collect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they, oh, they yeah. make up yeah. for that yeah. and other, yeah. Because yeah. Medicaid federally Medicaid. mandated Medicaid, they're saying, this is what we're going to pay, and that's all you're going to get. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I, I do. Right. I, I don't yeah. Yeah. And that's across the board. And I, I will say, one of the reasons Valley and Multicare want a strong market share in Covington is because we have such a strong, I think we're like a 90 to 95 percent insured rate mm -hmm. so it's really high here 
Multicare Covington helps pay for Multicare Auburn because of our insured rate here. Yeah, because of the private insurance versus Medicare and Medicaid, yeah. like yeah. Valley Medical at Renton. Does, doesn't right. make, that's why, like you said, for Auburn, they're paying, yeah. Valley's paying for yeah. Renton. Jenny, I, as soon as she gets done with this, I'll look to see. Okay, if thank you. So on that, did I understand correctly that we, if we pick a sector, say medical, we have to set the same threshold and the same rate for everyone? Yep, correct. So, okay. Even though one, you know, one company makes thirty billion and the other guy makes five hundred thousand. Yeah, interesting. Wow. Well, you can set the threshold. Yeah, right. Right. Five, yeah. right, but that's what. But then five hundred one thousand, you're gonna pay. Yeah, you know, so it's thirty billion. So interesting. Well, so if yeah. we set the threshold at five hundred and they make thirty billion, are they paying BO tax on the thirty million minus five hundred thousand, or oh, the whole they're paying thing. the whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. It just All means right. they have to start reporting if they hit that 500. Okay. So maybe I'm not understanding it or, or missing something, but I'm like, if that if a hospital, like multi-care or whatever, you have it in your jurisdiction, there's 30 billion, why wouldn't you issue a b &O tax on it? Why, if that pot of money is there and other cities are collecting on it, why wouldn't you do it? I don't, I mean, I'm, what's the argument against it other than they'll say, we don't want to pay it, but actually our hospitals have said they're supportive of this okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so but i think to beth and debbie's point is that one dentist mentioned well i can't increase rates on my medicare patients so that so just gets into my problems yeah. do we have any medical establishments that primarily rely on medicare and i'm thinking like valley cities those types of businesses do primarily health point that's primarily medicare dollars I am I, not I don't aware know. of necessarily yeah. any that would yeah. be impacted substantially. Yeah. Yes, but it's still, but still, they were, most of their patients pay with Medicare. They do. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Is I don't know. There's, if we have but I don't know that there's an anchor. Yeah, located here. Yeah. Because the health point was so the foundation. Hey, Mark. Can you leave him up on there on the side? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, question mark on this annual gross receipts and maybe Casey you know it so if we set it that it's on annual gross receipts can you say annual gross receipts minus Medicare or does it have to be all gross receipts there, that, there, go ahead Casey oh I was gonna say there are allowable deductions whether or not Medicare is one of them I would okay. uh, assume not probably but so. they we okay. do have some allowable Okay, thank you. Um, Siobhan did get the numbers for the 250,000. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't want to open. See it. Oh, it's not responding. <laughs> While we're waiting for that to pop okay. back up, <laughs> let me go to the next one. Okay, here we go. Um, so go if we went to two hundred and fifty thousand, um, it would reduce it by about just under fifty uh, one thousand. So it'd be nine hundred something collections. Nine hundred fifty thousand. One one two seven. If it could you. Could you pay by 51, that would be a million. So mm -hmm. if we did the 0. 0.002, it would go from 1.127 to 1 million 76. So it's a oh. different of about 51,000. It was 1093 on oh, the 20,000 down to the 250,000. Yeah, and, and it would okay. drop an additional 45 businesses. So okay. I can't see that far. <laughs> That number again, it's a million seventy a million seventy six three forty eight ninety one. And how many businesses would that be at two hundred fifty thousand? It would reduce it from four hundred and eighty three businesses uh oh down to no that's what it's oh, going to be seen at five. So, so forty three minus three hundred six seventy seven. Well, one seventy seven. Yeah, one seventy seven. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, then you don't need to hire. Him. You want to take care of it. Yeah, so, Timothy, like, to what your point, the the value of a employee, the cost of an employee to manage the difference. I mean, any employee we put on the books is going to be at least one hundred twenty grand. The city mm -hmm. benefits. So, yeah, well, thirty five. I mean, right. we probably still have to have one person on there, but I don't. That's what we're proposing. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just um, go over these last few slides, then I can get to that. But just some of the benefits that I wrote down of a BO, and I didn't have, there's pros and cons to everything, but this would be a reoccurring revenue that would diversify our, our current revenue sources that we have. Mm -hmm. um, again, they're unrestricted. It will help close that revenue and expenditure gap we have due to our rising public safety costs. Uh, several major cities surrounding us have already implemented one. The cities, uh, uh, we are allowed to establish the rates, exemptions, the threshold amounts, so that we're maintaining, you know, significant influence over the impacts of the tax. And again, the new revenue source di diversifies our revenues and will assist with maintaining our current uh, strong bond rating as well. So if we choose to move forward, some of the required next steps that we have would be, again, adopting the model administrative and B&O tax ordinance we would need to establish the rates by category and the minimum threshold and then discuss if, if there is any additional exemptions that we want to do. We would need to provide the notice to businesses. Um, I'll work with Carla creating a website and get some mailings out, things of that nature. And then we would also need to approve an additional Springbrook tax model and Springbrook is our financial software that we have. It would be about a $40,000 um, Capital outlay, $6,800 of it would be ongoing for the maintenance, and 33000 of it would just be the one-time purchase of the module. And then, like Beth was, was saying, approve of one new FT position in finance to help administer it and, and to audit the collections. And then we'd also need, we're also working on implementing um, an online payment process and it, along with the tax module. And we're working with our current, current um, permit tracks vendor, the one that does our... Um, online permits and they feel they can make us a, a portal that they already have it built for submitting online permit payments and they feel they can make one for us as well um, for free. So that's great because most cities were using file local and it was expensive. Okay. 60,000, like, I mean, it was, Auburn was paying. I think the total was 70,000 yeah. to get us up and going. And it was they, a lot. And they can't, um, make it specific to your city so like there are still workarounds that you'd have to do even with that system yeah. so um, kind of just started that process just just to see if it's something that's possible but it looks like it might work with permit checks which will save us a, a nice chunk of change every year so so those are kind of the next steps and um we can also look to see can we look to see if you were able to tell healthcare so there's a couple of different ones that's going to be there so I like that includes massage, acupuncture. Oh, okay, so there would be a lot of different things um, included in the healthcare. They call it a NIC code. It's just like a. I think digits. it would be a pretty large sum of. It would be of the services. The it would cut out. Yeah. It would cut out probably. I can run it just by the six. <clears throat> so if you were to exempt nonprofits such as your store, storehouse and. Some of these other ones. How do you do that so that it doesn't accept like the multi cares and um uh, Mark, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've seen several cities that have exempted 501c3s except okay. for um, okay. except so like, like 501 c you, you could write some language in there. Um uh, yes. yeah. Okay. So it is. Are hospitals 501c3? Isn't there a different like nonprofit? I, I think there's it? like a 501c3, seven, and yeah. like, oh, those different tax categories. Yeah, and they fall into that. Although UW, I was surprised, is both private and public. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they would pay 100% on their private portion of their, or private, yep, yeah, and the public portion that would be nonprofit. Then, well, if we don't accept them, they would pay on everything. But, Sean. So as Lake Point gets developed and we set a rate, certain rate and uh, tax percentage, 
do those businesses that meet that automatically come in, or do we have to go out? To, so they're five hundred thousand or more in retail. They it's just yeah. a valid referendum. Any new business that comes in, and then any business that obviously grows and they get the great. Yep. Yep. Uh, I just said about sorry, oh, but okay. you mentioned online payment. Yep. Uh, a lot of places now are charging a fee for that. Would we have to pay a fee to do that? So we are currently not charging a credit card fee. Yeah. Um, and it used to be that, well, mostly it was permit tracks is where most of our online um, payments are made. And his software was not able to do the online fee like we needed it to be done. It had to be two separate merchant accounts, too much accounting stuff, but he couldn't do it. His new software can. <laughs> so we were paying that. So we are currently paying the yeah. fee, the credit card fees. Uh, it's generally anywhere between two and three percent. Two or three, yeah, it, it uh, adds up. Uh -oh. It does add up. Uh, so if we did make that change, it would probably be something we would discuss. Yeah. It would be citywide. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, I would say we'd want to look at that. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's definitely on our radar. We actually just talked about it today. So. <laughs> So if we took out all of the medical, um, it, not including like the hospitals and stuff, because they're not calculated in this, it'd be just under $39 million that would be taken out. And what would that be times? Wait, 30. 70 bucks. Wait, did you say? 700 bucks. 39 million. 39 million. Of total. In okay. gross receipts. Yeah. Oh, in gross receipts. Yeah. Okay. So the impact to us would be... Uh, 0.2% of that. Seven thousand. In addition, that right. yeah, and that doesn't include the hospitals. So. Okay, so we would we would get seventy k less mm -hmm. if we exempt healthcare. Yeah. Right. Okay. So whatever else potential that we don't know of. It would it would be a lot more than that because the hospitals alone bring in the majority of the revenue that's not accounted for. And so if we exempted them, we'd have to exempt everybody, which would probably oh, be significant. Okay. Thank you. Is that everything in your presentation? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? What, what, one other question. So, thank you for this. It's great, it's helpful. And I saw the different rates that you can set uh, the amounts gross revenue. Can you go higher than that? Can you go to a million? Or is 500,000 a big profit? Um, for the, the we didn't do 500. The threshold, no, 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 I'm saying on the threshold, so yeah, we, so we can we keep going as high as you want. Well, yeah. I was just wondering, for get it down to two business. wanted to get to that <laughs> level to say you set the threshold high enough, uh, you know, whatever it is, 500 or 5 million, you're going to probably kick out most of the doctors, but you're going to still get the hospital. Not so I'm just saying, I'm just, I would, it, I would guess I bring that over a million. And gross receipts. What's that? I would guess they're bringing in over a million. Yeah, so if you're going five, five million or ten million, so that they're, yeah, you have to make more gross receipts than ten mil. Most of your little mom and pop doctors aren't going to be pulling in ten million. So oh. that'd be one way to, if you were concerned about that. So. Yeah. But if you do medical at that high amount, you'd be putting. Mark, can you just <laughs> single out medical at that high amount? Or does it have to be by services? Oh, it'd be he was saying retail. it has to be. It has to be, no, it has to be by the form. four different no, categories. Right category. category. oh, no, that's correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Medical uh, falls under yeah. services. Okay. So. Yeah. True. Okay. Any other questions? What do you need from us tonight? Direction, if you're ready to give it. <laughs> so does council? Any do you want me to come back with any any additional ahead, information? Back. Just so. Just if we did decide to go with a, a two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. threshold, that more than halves the number of businesses that we would need to audit. Um, does it make would it make sense to hire a half auditor, or maybe they do something else at the city too, right? Or to hire part time people, or maybe it isn't. But we save 
half salary. Not quite that. Um, or death. Yeah, no, that's that's completely possible. Uh, we we don't have a super good feel for yeah. how this is going to go. Um, from what we've talked, like talked from Tuckwill and Auburn, of course, they're way bigger than us, but they kind of said, you guys are going to need more than you think you're going to need <laughs> for time. And uh, I know some of them are also struggling with collections. So if we have somebody that could stay on it. Yeah. yeah. So, stay on it. Yeah, yeah, the city of Auburn has since hired four additional people right. than what they had originally thought because a lot of businesses aren't paying or they're paying mm -hmm. the wrong amounts because um, even if they don't qualify for like it, the first or second quarter or even till third quarter, they still have to file at zero because if they don't and we don't put it in the system, it's going to charge them interest and penalties automatically because that's a requirement. Mm -hmm. So it would just assume that they just didn't file like they're supposed to. So there's still the input of having to do that and making sure that they're submitting that. So they wouldn't, depending on how we set it up, they wouldn't actually start paying it until they've hit that threshold unless we set it up. Some cities have done, let's say their threshold is 20,000. They're saying if you hit 5,000 within that first quarter, you start paying. And then if you don't hit the 20,000, then it's kind of credited next year. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a big process. So the higher the threshold, the better it is. And most of them um, will just pay you know, quarterly, and then at year end, kind of true up when they know what their actuals are. Mm -hmm. So if they overpay for quarters one through three or quarter four, they would reduce it by whatever that that difference is. Difference is Joe, I I just have a, a question. This is probably more on the, on the basis of uh, minutia, but when we're talking about sending the bills to these businesses. We're talking about, um, you know, RC, uh, the RC store over there. We send it directly to them. Do we send the bill to Wal from Walmart to uh, Arkansas, or do we send it to the Covington Walmart? It's, so yeah. we'll get a download from the um, state's business license system, and wherever they file their um, information with the state is where we would send the notice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they, it would be on them to file the return. So they would have to go to our website and print off the form and either do it online. It's not something like we would have to send out to them quarterly. It's something that they just have to initiate on their own. Just like with the state. Yeah. It's just oh, that they're not if you don't give them his money. <laughs> so what you're looking for tonight is a potential threshold, <laughs> potential tax rate, and potential exemptions. Those are the three that you need tonight to bring back to us at a future council meeting. But at that council meeting, we can also make adjustments as we think about it. Okay, so we've had, we've got these different thresholds. Right now they're showing 150, but uh, Siobhan brought up 250, would bring it down to 173 businesses and bring it down to um, so it's 177 businesses and it would reduce it, let's see, by uh, 50,951. So it'd bring it down to 1,040,000. Uh, it's 1,076,000. Oh, 1,076,000. Okay. Oh, you're going off the total of <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. I'm, it's taking away from the initial oh, one. From so does council have a suggestion of a threshold they'd like to bring back? Yes. Sean. Oh, I, do, I I do like the two fifty. Yeah. Uh, the point zero zero two uniform. What was the third one? The yeah. types of exemptions. So like, yeah. Non I'm thinking nonprofits such as like Valley Cities and yes. uh, Storehouse and that type of nonprofit yes. that mm -hmm. provides the service. Five hundred one c threes. But but there's five hundred one c threes that are also. Except that claim nonprofit because I think part of the medical is if 501c3. We, if we want to get into that business of, of exempting the nonprofit, the threshold should keep most, most of, of those nonprofits out of it True. and okay. capture the ones that we want to capture. Because we can always, if we find out that we're exempting or we're not exempting a certain nonprofit, we can always re put that classification in there and it doesn't go back out for referendum. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So is council good with a 250,000 at a 0.2% to just bring back to us? Yeah. Is it possible that, I just, I really, really, really have a hard time if, if somebody like a storehouse or vine local place is gonna have to pay being no tax. Well, yeah. vine, well, vine, vine place wouldn't, they're not right. Here. Yeah. But the storehouse. I have our house could really be close at, at 250. Charging a nonprofit that's too yeah. good in the community yeah. for that. Um, and I, I don't know if there's a way to, that's why we bring back that right. type of nonprofit to be included as an exemption. But I thought you said, oh. We can in the future. Yeah. Oh, this guy. find out. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And always so okay. is council okay. good with that to bring that back at a future council meeting sure. for further discussion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So 250000 at the point zero zero two, with a list of that we can do um, potential nonprofits. Yeah. And can I suggest just if if we are cutting close and it doesn't look that big of a difference, can we get a three hundred fifty thousand? That's what I was going to say. Just as I would, I would like to see three hundred fifty and five hundred. Mm -hmm. I can do that because the and four of the other cities happen. on here are that high. I would like to yeah. see Check that out. what our yeah. numbers look like there. Okay, we can do it. Good, that's Great. good. Okay, anything else you need from us tonight? Appreciate your time. All right, no, thank you. Yeah. Thanks thank for bringing you. it. So, so just, just for clarity help. purposes, we'll we'll bring it back. Um, threshold of 500 and 350 and 250. Yeah, we've got well, yeah, we 250 and 250 in writing. Yeah. Okay. We'll get those two new thresholds. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then no exemptions. And well, city. City. TBD. City, yeah. Oh, city. Yeah. Now we're going to do ourselves. Okay. Okay. Great. Very cool. I don't know, so you'll bring it back at staff's recommendation time. Yeah. What was the main ones that are located in City of Coving or in, yeah, City of Coving? The nonprofits That's storehouse. storehouse would be the big one. Because we yeah. can go see sure. what they have put on um, as what they yeah an average is to see if they would even fall into that ever, just based off of kind of how they've reported yeah, and see if that she's on the board. So she would find me would um like Valley Cities and Kent Youth and Family Services. Because like they do services. businesses in here, in the city. I don't know if they. Or do they have to be to based in the city? If they do business here, but it would have to be exceeding that amount in business here. So if Kent Youth and Family Services did, over, let's say we said a five hundred thousand. I'm not saying they're doing that, but if Kent Youth and Family Services did over five hundred thousand within the city of Covington, they'd have to pay being taxed. Yes. yes. Just on that, not on their whole. Yeah. Right. Yes. Just on the portion that they do Collect in Covington. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we want to keep it high enough where we're not mm -hmm. discouraging these smaller nonprofit mm -hmm. groups that are very reliant on Medicaid dollars from coming and providing services yeah. at kind of ad hoc to us yeah. because we that's all we got. And right. we're gonna scare them away if it's it's low enough that causes them to do additional reporting and tax pay. Yeah. They don't have the staff to support stuff like this. And I'll clarify with Mark. What type of language I can and can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Perfect. All right. Cool. Thank you all very much. Yeah. The special <laughs> meeting is adjourned. Mm -hmm.